Hi, good morning, and welcome to Live with Joy. Uh, happy Monday to everybody. Another week that we're gonna have full of workouts, and I'm just going to wait just a few moments for everybody to come onto that post. I'm gonna explain exactly what we're gonna be doing today and exactly what we're gonna be focusing on for the week. Um, so as you come in, and I will mention it in just a moment as I see more people come in, but you will see that the title is Kettlebell Dumbbell Muscle Movement. So you can do this with either a kettlebell or a dumbbell. Either one will work for this today. And um, you're not gonna need to have your mat because we're not coming to the floor today, so everything is going to be on our feet. So you don't have to worry about coming to that floor. You just need to have one dumbbell or one kettlebell. You can have different sizes so that you can interchange depending on the exercises that we're doing. You might wanna go lighter or heavier. Certain things you may wanna use the kettlebell, maybe you wanna use the dumbbell. So I'm gonna show you it with both. It's just a little bit different on the field, but you're still using that weight and resistance for the exercises that we're doing. So let's talk about this week. What we're gonna be focusing on this week is smooth transitioning. So basically, whatever exercises we're gonna have in the circuit, whether it be two or more, we are going to transition seamlessly from one exercise into another. So I'm gonna show you how you do that. You pick exercises that basically you need absolutely no transition time. You can just seamlessly go from one exercise into the other. Today we have supersets, so that's just gonna be two exercises per circuit. So those exercises are just gonna seamlessly transition those two exercises into each other so that we have no need for any transition time, which means that once we're in that circuit, we are having constant movement until that circuit is done. So every circuit, once you start it, it's constant movement. No transitions, no breaks, no rest. You just get in, you do it, and you're done. And that's basically going to be what the entire week is going to be. We're gonna work on every exercise that we do in those circuits are gonna seamlessly transition into one another so that we have constant movement going when we are in those circuits we are active active the entire circuit okay so you can see i've got dumbbell or kettlebell you're going to decide which one you want obviously some of you may not have those kettlebells so you're just going to be using a dumbbell no big deal you're still getting the same exact muscles working and conditioning and moving again it's just a little bit different of a feel little different of the but the movement is exactly the same and the muscles you're working are exactly the same as well okay first thing that we're going to do is warm it up okay let's get that body going so we down the track back and make that center and march it out right to left standing up nice and tall Let's go eight more here. Eight, seven, four, three, two. Let's heel across and push. Get those arms and legs moving. You wanna get those joints all warmed up, those muscles all warmed up. Get that blood flowing through the body. Four, three, two, step, touch. Take it side to side. Last eight, seven, four, three, two, reach across and tap, reach. Eight, seven, four, three, two, reach it overhead, up. You got eight more here, eight. Seven, four, three, two, reach it back and cross, reach. Eight more, eight. Four, three, two, hamstring curl, pull back. Eight more, eight. Four, three, two, knees to the front. Let's pull. Eight more. Eight, seven, four, three, two. Back to the hamstrings for eight. Four, three, two. Reach across and tap for eight. Four, three, Two, reach it overhead, up. Eight 
Back row cross for eight. Four, three, two, step, touch, and side, side. Four, three, two, heel across, push forward. Four, three, two, marching out, right, left. Keep marching, let's roll those shoulders back for four, three, two, tip those legs out wide and hold. Hands on those thighs and hinge forward with a flat back. Let's hold and roll it up halfway, stretch that spine. Take that flat back down, roll it all the way up. Let that head come up last and roll the shoulders back. All right, watch me, I'm gonna show you the kettlebell. I'll show you the dumbbell, your first move right here. Holding on to the kettlebell here on the handle. We're gonna hinge with that straight back and straight legs. You reach to the inside of that foot and circle around to the other side, okay? And then we're gonna come center here, hinge forward, center, and high pull up. So it's gonna look like this, okay? And then you're right back into those circles and then to the other side, okay? If you're using the dumbbell, very similar. You're just gonna hold it like this as you circle around. And then when you get to that hinge forward high pull, you hold it in the center of that weight. And same movement right here, okay? And they're gonna slow us in transition, so there's no transition time. Once we're in it, we're in it. So with that kettlebell or with that dumbbell, up nice and tall, get ready to hinge and reach for the opposite foot. You have that little angle, circle around the back, angle to reach for the inside of the opposite foot for 30 seconds, and we've got four sets of everything, okay? On those, uh, the second exercise, you'll be changing, so you only have to do each side two times on those high pulls, okay, right here. Again, with that dumbbell or with that kettlebell, okay? You're just passing either the dumbbell or you're passing that kettlebell with the handle around the back to the other hand, hinge forward and reach for that opposite foot, okay? You don't have to worry about going super fast on these. Get that nice stretch. All right, so now here is our transition, nice and seamless. Hinge forward, center, high pull up. Okay, so you have no transition time. It just gets right into that hand and right into that move. And then we're gonna go right back to those circle and reaches. So you've got holding the center of that dumbbell on the handle, okay? Or you're holding that kettlebell on the handle. Hinging forward with a nice straight back and then high pull up right here. Good, let's get that last one in. And now we're right back to hinge and circle. So see how that seamlessly transitions right back to your first exercise. And then it's gonna be in that left hand for your second set of that hinge forward into that high pull. Our feet are staying exactly in the same spot for this circuit the entire time. So there's no movement. It's as if our feet are glued to that floor here. Good, it should be in that left hand. Hinge forward, if it's not, just circle around to get into that left hand. And then you're right into that hinge forward center and that high pull as you come up. With that dumbbell, or again, with that kettlebell. All about those seamless transitions, one into the other. Get that last one in. Hinge forward and circle. Set number three. So we're constantly moving. We don't need to reset. We don't need to have any transition time. We just go from one exercise seamlessly into the next. And that is our theme for the week, guys. So you're gonna learn. It takes a little bit of an art to really kind of put exercises together that are fairly seamless with minimal to no transition time. Good, bringing it into that right hand for that second set. Hinge forward center, high pull it up. And then one more set of each coming up. Engage that center, you're working that lower back here, those glutes, the back of those legs and those hamstrings, and that shoulder and back as you pull up through that high pull. Good, get that last one in, and then right back into that circle, and reach for your final set right here, and then that left hand, hinge forward, high pull. Awesome.
Awesome work, guys. Hang in there. It's only our first circuit. We've got six of them today. Good. Should be in that left hand. If not, circle around to get it there. Hinge forward. High pull up. For that final set right here. Right here, with that kettlebell, 
or with that dumbbell. You got it. Keep going. You're going to get a break in just a moment. Exactly. 15 seconds from now, you're going to get that break. And then I'm going to show you next two seamless exercises, okay? Last five seconds right here. Three, two, and one. Go get some water. Resetting that clock. And watch me. You've got two options here, okay? You guys have done this before. Knee and pass from the inside of the leg to the outside. Option number two, of course a little bit harder, getting into that lunge and pass, okay? Second exercise in the right hand first, hinge forward into a single, deadlift, back up. You wanna hold and row. Now if you can't hold that leg up, just put that foot on the floor, hold a little straggly stance, okay? You can even bend both knees and just be on your toe if you need, okay? If you are using that dumbbell, same thing. Pass it underneath, pass it underneath here, and then you just hold it in the center for that hinge and row, okay? And we gotta change those lead sides as we move through it, okay? So once we're in it, we're in it. You're either doing that knee and pass or that lunge and pass. Get set and go. Alternate knees that you're passing with, okay? Dumbbell or kettlebell underneath, or you're getting low enough to run back and pass that kettlebell or dumbbell underneath your leg as you bend through those knees. Keep that upper body nice and tall. You don't want to be doing this to get to it, okay? So if that's the case, do your knees seamlessly right here, right hand, and pull. Once again, if you need, throw on the floor, pull, make your way back up, okay? So if you can't hold, keep that toe on the floor. If you can't bend knees, that's totally fine. Now you want to slight bend in that standing leg, no matter what, anyway. Go ahead, kettlebell row or dumbbell row. Good, finish up that last one and you're seamlessly right back into your lunges or your knee pass, right? So right back here, if you're knee passing, right here, if you're lunging passing, and then we're going to that left side row with that single leg deadlift. Keep that upper body tall. Good, it's gonna come to that left hand. Hinge and pull. And again, if you have that toe down, you're just hinging there. Good, you can take it further away, or you can even keep it close and be on that toe if you need, okay? Either way, you wanna get more weight onto this front leg as you pinch forward. Good, right into set number three. That knee and pass, or that lunge and pass as we get down low enough to pass underneath that leg. And then we're back to that right hand for that row and single leg deadlift. Upper body tall, as you pass, you come all the way up in between each one. Back to that right hand, hinge forward, row, and back up. Good, that strong front leg, whether that back foot is on the floor or it's elevated, that front leg is still taking on more of that weight and stability. Good, right back into those knees or those lunges. Pass from the inside to the outside, right here, you got it. Hang in there, keep passing, whether it's knees, you're getting the knees up high enough or you're lunging low enough to pass it underneath those legs as well. And then it's going into that left hand for that row and single leg deadlift. Five more seconds, three, two, one. It should be in your left hand, hinge forward, with that row. Again, whether that toe is on the floor or not, you still want to hinge forward to hit that back. 
You still want to get more weight and stability in that front leg. So stagger that stance with that hinge forward. Get that leg up and off the floor if you can balance it. If not, make it a smaller move and keep that toe on the floor to help stabilize you and give you that balance. Good, everybody go get some water if you need it. Resetting that clock. And we are moving on. All right, so watch me here. We are going to step into what we call a curtsy lunge. So I'm gonna reach for the inside of that foot. I'm gonna come up and circle around and then curtsy lunge on the other side, reaching for the inside of that foot, okay? Now, curtsy can be small. You could barely bend, okay? But you wanna get that little step and move, okay? A little bit different from the beginning where we were just staying in solid ground. And then the legs are coming out wide and we're gonna come into a plyo squat. Frontal raise to come up and down, bend and extend to the top. Now, if you're using that dumbbell, it's the same thing. Reach for the inside, circle it, inside, circle it, get wide, up, bend and extend, okay? So you just have to quickly get those feet out nice and wide for that second exercise, okay? And then you turn the toes back in, go right back into those curtsy lunge and circles, okay? So we're starting with that curtsy lunge right here, little bend, or lower if you can, come on up, circle, curtsy lunge, reach the inside that foot, and we're moving, go, 30 seconds on that clock. Curtsy lunge, circle. So take this slow, so you make sure that you get that pass around the back as you move. So again, a little bit different from the beginning exercise in the first circuit, because now we're moving as we pass it. We got a step, okay? So it makes that move a little bit different here, and you gotta work a little bit more coordination as you step move and you pass to the other hand. Good, legs out wide, toes turned out. And you're right here. Good, get those toes turned out and keep that body upright here. We don't want to hinge forward as we bend and extend through those knees. Try to make that as seamless as you can as we move from one exercise into the other. And again, there is no lead changes on this one. Good, take it down, turn the toes in, curtsy, you step. Might not want to be too wide because you've got a pass behind you, okay? So normally we take a nice wide step into that curtsy lunge, okay? But here, because you've got to pass that lead around, you might want to make it a smaller step than what you might be used to on that exchange behind your back. And then curtsy lunge from there. Good, take it up wide, toes turned out. Bend and extend at the top. Bend and extend at the bottom of the knees. Good, as we move here, I want you to squeeze those glutes and those quads nice and tight. Engage that center. Good, turn those toes in slightly. Curtsy lunge, step and circle. So again, we've got that movement here as we circle. Makes it a little bit harder. You gotta think about it a little bit. Good, take it wide. Plie squat, bend and extend at the top. And those arms transitioning up and down for that plie. Up and over that head for that tricep extension. You gotta super engage that core as that weight comes up. Dumbbell or kettlebell. Turn those toes in. Last and final circuit in that curtsy lunge. And right here is that switch behind the back. Circle step. You gotta circle and step. Half 
passing that dumbbell or that kettlebell behind that back, taking it wide, plie squat, lift, bend and extend to the top. You guys stay right there. You get ready to show you the next two exercises. Keep breathing. You're gonna get a break in just a moment. Come on, sit into that PA squat. Rise those arms up. Bend and extend behind that head. And breathe through it. Coming on your last five seconds. And done, awesome. Okay, watch me. Got some options here. This is gonna be probably your toughest one. We're gonna bring those feet together here, okay? We are going to, as we bend, the weight comes behind us and we swing up here, okay? Squeeze those legs together if you can. We're doing just one side right there. And then we're popping it up, side lunge, and curl, okay? Not the side lunge too much, just step. Step side and curl, doesn't have to be that side lunge. Okay, and same thing is gonna happen with that dumbbell. Feet together, we come back as we bend, up and we swing it in front, and then we wanna take it here into your side lunge curl, or step and curl, okay? So kettlebell or dumbbell in that right hand. And we gotta switch sides for both exercises on this one, but they're gonna smoothly transition, and you're gonna quickly make that exchange, okay? So right here, first you wanna bend as you bring the weight behind you, Swing it as you come up. And go, 30 seconds on that clock. I'm gonna turn you sideways as well. My feet are together, or as close as I can get them. Trying to squeeze to my knees as I come down into this bend. You got just that one arm swinging the entire time. Makes it a little bit more difficult, because you're not passing it. Good, pop it up, side lunge or side step, and as you step it in, you extend those arms down. And then we're gonna pass it right to the other hand for that chair squat, kettlebell or dumbbell swing. Only one arm, it's going into the left. Good, into that left hand. Then we swing it back, lift, we swing it up. Squeeze those glutes at the top. Breathe, see how I'm breathing? I'm exhaling. Good, pop it up into those hands. Side lunge to side step. And curl as you step out. Extend as you step in. So we're starting that week out with a full body workout. Then we're gonna start to break down the body. But no matter what we focus on for that day, we're focusing on those seamless transitions right here for set two on the right side. So these seamless transitions are going to keep you more active throughout your workout. Good, bring it up, step or side lunge. Extend the lengthen as you step in. Five more seconds. And get ready to finish on the other side. Into that left hand, bend and swing back, extend and swing up. Good, get that 
reps to finish it up. Good, bring it up. Side lunge to side step. Stand as you come in.
you come up, circle it around. Take that rest down by the belly in between each one if you need it. exercises. Today was just a sample of that with our full body workout using either a kettlebell or a dumbbell. Either or, same workout, constant movement, which burns those calories, gets that heart rate up, gets all those muscles moving. 
with constant movement. And we'll focus on different areas of the body throughout the week, but we're gonna continue to do those smooth transitions throughout the week. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this workout, once again, you save it, share it, okay? Or come back to this page, click on videos, and they're all there for you. Tomorrow, our class is 10 o'clock virtually. Wednesday, don't forget, we have a 9.30 start time, and I will be on location at the JCC, which you can come to do. Okay, if you're a member of the JCC, you can register for the class at myyjcc.org and do the outdoor workout in person with me, and everybody else will virtually get it at home. But if you want to do it in person with me, just make sure you register first. It is now open for our Wednesday morning. You can register anytime from now until then. I think until a certain amount of time up to the class in the morning. So always try to get your registration in the night before if you're thinking about coming, okay? Otherwise, I will see you virtually here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.